a little bit, but um, but there are maybe some things that you know members believe that their current districts, you know, there's something for. Um, I would really like to hear about that, or the public believes there's something really core uh, for Midtown. To me, that's not having a limited road service area. We are in the Midtown. We are in the middle of town. We are, you know, and we are there. We're like right smack in the middle. Um, and so I just wanted to raise that. You know, it's just something that I've been really reflecting on throughout this entire process, um, kind of beyond the deviations and the population and all the other kind of technical things. It's just, what will the identity of the districts be when, um, when, we, when we make these decisions? Thanks. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I want to speak to the overwhelming feedback that I've received from constituents in District 6 and I believe many other uh, members, not just of the committee, but of the assembly have also received this feedback. Um, and just to put it succinctly, and I think it's not a surprise, don't remove the hillside from District 6. Don't put the hillside with Eagle River District 2. I would characterize that as the consistent and top piece of feedback that I have received from constituents. And I want to recognize, as it was pointed out um, yesterday by the Vice President of the Huffman Valley Community Council, that folks living in District 6, especially in the Hillside area, have been highly engaged in this process, we've received resolutions from Halo, from the Hillside Community Council, from the Huffman O'Malley Community Council, from Rabbit Creek Community Council. And I have heard from people in my five years on the assembly I've never heard from before contact me specifically to say that it's very important um, in terms of community continuity and connectedness to keep the Southeast Anchorage hillside in District 6. And so I guess I would just add, um, while I recognize that there is going to need to be some push and pull and some give and take, and to Ms. Alatel's point, as we come to a different understanding of the different areas and the different districts, and maybe that results in different names, that um, we all have our top priorities for our districts. And I just want to state very clearly that um, my top priority, my non-negotiable in this process based on constituent feedback is to keep the Southeast Anchorage Hillside in District 6. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Wellington. Uh, thank you, so I mean, because I'd say the same thing that uh, Suzanne would, and I have a question for Ms. Alatel. So you mentioned you don't want a living road service area in your district, but I don't think any of them have to do that. Mr. Yeah. Sorry, did you go to me, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so a, a few things from me. Um, first, uh, you know, what I heard from the public throughout this process, I think that's what we're, we're doing right now. So uh, first, uh, focusing in on Midtown, um, what I heard from my constituents, uh, there is a strong desire to keep Rogers Park together. And interestingly enough, um, sort of converse to that, uh, in a conversation at the Airport Heights Community Council uh, last week, um, Airport Heights um, isn't as much uh, concerned about splitting. I think they initially had some concerns, but at the end of their lengthy conversation, um, I think you know they would be okay having a park kept in Midtown and a park uh, kept in uh, moved into downtown. Um, 
which is, you know, I think that's interesting. I think that goes through the reverse to what we've, what we've heard in the other communities. So I thought that was an interesting conversation that was, um, you know, they, they initiated that conversation. Um, and then, uh, you know, generally, I think what I've heard from the public is, and I think, uh, you know, echoing what Ms. LaFrance heard, is not splitting, uh, not putting parts of, uh, the hillside is the Trigak Eagle River, and you know, interestingly enough, uh, that's also uh, some opinions that I have heard when I have walked my eight community councils through all of the maps. They have commented that's sort of strange, and they've also commented that it's uh, in some community councils, some individuals have commented about um, splitting Jay Bear with Trigak Eagle River. Um, so uh, that is what I have heard from my constituents, and um, I agree with. A midtown colleague about um, sort of the the spirit of each district and you know taking a look at the what's what's the core of each district and I know in committee that has been the heavy part of the discussion and um, you know in my opinion I know we're not there yet but I, I do think that we have a map that um, does really well in that regard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, let's see, I feel like there are a lot of thoughts swirling around. I guess to start, everyone has interests for their specific district, but I think we also should be thinking, and I really focus less on just my district and more on how this process and what we ultimately end up with impacts our city. And I guess I will say that. Um, I think it would be fair to include part of the hillside with Eagle River. Um, the reason is that Eagle River is small. And so Eagle River, if it wants to maintain the same level of population, has to take from somewhere. Historically, that has been either the base or downtown. All these maps suggested was that the hillside being adjacent. Those are the districts, right? Downtown, east, hillside take a turn, and it's not lost on me that it is, um, we are getting a lot of feedback, um, and we're getting feedback from people in, you know, uh, um, high income, high resource areas, and we're not really hearing um, from lower income folks in East Anchorage or Fairview or people on the base about how this would impact them. And so I guess I'm a little, I feel like this process is playing out as to people who have access to community councils, have power with their assembly members, and have, frankly, wealth and resources are the ones showing up before us and um, putting us in a position that we are, we don't have the political will on this body to do what I think is right. And I'm very um, disappointed by that. Um, you know, I guess through this process, I've been thinking about the whole city, not just my district. And Mr. Wells, at one point, asked, you know, what do you think about West High being downtown? And I said, we all have to give a little. We all have to be flexible. But I feel like at this point, other members are saying, we're, we're not giving. This is a hard line. And so I feel like if that's where, what we're, where we are, then I will tell you that my district, West High, is part of my district. And... Uh, Forest Park is part of my district. That's quintessential West Anchorage. And so I guess I'm frustrated because I feel like the lack of compromise means other people's districts take the big changes. My district has changed significantly, for instance, with Mount 11, which a lot of people seem to be coalescing around. Um, so, yeah, I guess I just want to say I'm, I'm a little frustrated at the process and at these kind of hard lines based on feedback from a very specific demographic. Thank you very much. And Mr. Peterson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And we, uh, Mr. Dunbar and I, uh, had our Bachelor Community Council meeting last night. They, they meet quarterly, so they, this was their only opportunity to give us any feedback on, on this uh, situation. And, and uh, a number of uh, members. <clears throat> said that they were wanting to stay in District 5 in East Anchorage. They didn't want to be stuck in South Anchorage and they didn't want to be stuck in Eagle River. And so that was that was seemed to seemed to be a general theme from them. We've also heard from other community councils, the Northeast Community <coughs> Council, 
uh, part of that area uh, uh, in the north end of turbines has been included in Eagle River District for the last 10 years, and, and they felt like they haven't been uh, getting representation, and so they would also like to be uh, in uh, District 5. And the, the maps that we are considering them, uh, um, have um, several of them have faster staying in District 5, and the uh, majority of them have uh, the north end of. of of Muldoon uh, up there by the Grand Highway uh, being included in, in District 5 where they haven't been in the last decade. So uh, I, I think some of these, these maps are actually, there's several of them that would uh, make uh, people in my district uh, uh, happy mostly satisfied with it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chief Zimmons. I have to ask you about it. Okay. Well, before we go for it, just for the public, uh, there's a new live stream available on the municipality's YouTube. The links are updated on the community page. The public knows you cannot access the live stream. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just one thing I forgot to say was that you know, throughout this process, I've been really focused on voter mediation as the constitutional standard that we need one person, one vote, and that's what we should be trying to achieve. The map, of course, that did that best was map eight, which had a part of the hillside combined with the river, and that was rejected by members. Um, so with that, I will say that if members are not prioritizing that as a high standard, and instead we're looking to neighborhood, I mean, I realize there are a lot of standards, right? And instead we're looking to neighborhood completion or other or other standards. Um, I, I mean, essentially, if if the Eagle River District doesn't share some of Hillside, it then comes into the rest of our districts, right? Then it impacts West Anchorage, it impacts Midtown, it impacts East Anchorage. And so it's either, yeah, Hillside or the rest of us, and it sounds like it's gonna be the rest of us. So um, with that, I, would guess, I guess I would say that I would be comfortable having, as Map 11 proposes, lower the deviation not be as close to zero because there's no way we can get to zero and have it um, work in my opinion and not heavily impact the rest of our districts. So um, you know for instance I've been thinking about an amendment that would move um for being able to talk about that. Okay. Um yes yeah, yeah. That would move um, Forest Park back into West Anchorage and take that from downtown. That wouldn't be downtown. It moves, you know, down by about a thousand people. That's still less down than Eagle River. So to me, that would be if that's if this is where we are. I think that would be acceptable. Um, so anyway, just good for that. Next, I have Miss Kennedy, you and I myself. Uh, Is that my C there? There? Yeah, before. Yes, please go ahead. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. It's the echo coming through the phone from all the noise and papers and everything else in the uh, in the room there kind of makes it hard to hear on the phone. But anyway, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, I guess I just wanted to comment that. You know, we've been talking with our community councils, and of course, I think we're all getting the same emails. And I just wanted to say that the issue with trying to put uh, the South Anchorage area in with Chugiak Eagle River has probably been the one thing that we've heard the most about. And I think uh, we heard a lot more in the beginning when there was the potential for putting Girdwood and Chugiak Eagle River together. And that, so that those comments have died down since we've eliminated the map that did that. Um, so that's good. That's progress. Um, but again, uh, you know, the whole issue with trying to incorporate the hillside area into Eagle River is probably the most problematic. And, uh, you know, it's funny because I've heard people say that, well, that's contiguous, you're connected. And, and really, there is no practical way of saying that we are connected because uh, we would have to go through anybody from the hillside to get to any other part of their district would have to go through two other districts 
uh, in terms of uh, if we were to use MAP 7. And if we, um, the same way, if, we're, if you're in Chudiak River and you want to go to uh, represent anybody from any of the local community councils in this hillside, you would have to drive through to other districts to do that. So I think you can pretty much look at the map and basically if you understand the geography of the area, if you understand our road system, you can see that they're not contiguous in any way, shape or form. So anyway, so that's, you know, probably the most of what I've heard. Um, the idea of giving up something, uh, you know, our district has consistently had that portion of North Muldoon. Uh, there's about uh, oh, a little over 3,000 people there. Um, so we are definitely trying to give that back to the east side and make that a contiguous group, uh, make that a compact uh, district. So um, there is some, obviously, some give in that. And, and of course, all of us have to give up some population. And so we are actually giving up more than we need to. So that brings me back to the other question or the other um, point to all of this that I, that I also hear from, and that is the idea of how do we effectively use the, the grace, if you will, that we've been given in the standard deviation, you know, that 5%. And certainly the idea uh, would be to ideally have zero deviation, but most, I mean, obviously people that came before us, uh, boundary commissions, uh, state courts have all recognized that that's just not possible and you have to have some flexibility. So um, we need to be able to use that flexibility and not feel bad about that. That's been, you know, like I said, that's kind of a, a grace point that's been given to us. So um, I just wanna make sure that we don't just throw things out the window because we might be close to even that 5%. Um, I think we're also told that even if we went above a 5% deviation, as long as we had some kind of rationale to justify that, then that would be okay and would be accepted uh, in the courts. So um, like I said, I think it's important to recognize that we have some elbow room, if you will, some wiggle room, and we ought to be able to feel comfortable enough to be able to use what's been given us. So um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So um, I have myself in the queue a few things. Um, I don't agree with the assessment that, that it's not contiguous because of the mountains for the drive through this or that district. The state has recognized since the beginning that there are just some geographic areas in Alaska that have difficulty. They're connected, but with water, there's some other features that make it difficult to have them connected. And, uh, I have seen the demographic maps, and there's a clear demographic difference between Jay Bear and the river. And in fact, that demographic difference is much more tied to the people who live in Midtown and the downtown core than it is any other part of town. When you look at the color of these maps and gradations, there are clear uh, parallels and similarities. But I also know how to read reality. And the reality is there's not political will to follow the equitable and just path, and instead what we're going to do is we're going to allow the people of all the privilege to once again get their way for the next 10 years. And so the question I find is important is how do we ensure we do as least harm in this process to the people who are not the people of all the privilege? How do I protect them and their community interests because we're not going to actually achieve the goal of equity that I hope we set out in this process? Because the people up on Hillside recognize themselves as having autonomy and the ability to choose what they want and the power and privilege to get it. The same with the people of Hillside. It's, it's profound. And so we're looking at the possibility of an extraordinary low deviation for Eagle River, which means that their vote is not one person, one vote. It's more like 1.25 persons per one vote. Meaning their vote is more powerful than anyone else in this town. And I find that to be very sad but it is also a practical reality. The feedback that I have heard, and it's a practical reality based on the decision of the members of this body. And so we get to own that, each in our individual capacities and all of us as a whole. We get to own that, and that will be our legacy. That said, again, practicality being the rule, we have to get to an achievable map that works. The feedback that I've heard is the topic of this section of the conversation has been broadly that Weldon's map is the map that has the closest 
an event. The closest approach to meeting a goal that is generally acceptable to the most amount of people. So that to me is where my attention has been drawn most closely because of the broad emails and the communications and the phone calls and the input from my constituents and constituents across the city. But it too needs work. And I see at least three areas where it needs work. So last night at the public hearing, there was an individual who testified that I asked the question, you know, how do you divide it? They suggested, well, think about it. This, where do the kids on Jaber go to school? And it was argued that they go to school to the Aki River area. And so I can't find that to be proven by the ASD maps because ASD maps leave a big blank spot for Jaber. It doesn't say where the kids go to school. But I do have a call in, you know, into the school district to get that information. But if I were to assume that what was stated last night was true, that members of the schools out there do flow into the schools out at Eagle River, to me, that demonstrates that one of the most profound communities of interest in town are the school district boundaries and where kids grow up and end up into a school with their neighbors and with their friends and their peer groups, et cetera. Because Families associated around schools with H, uh, with uh, PTAs. Uh, kids come up with their peer groups and they go to their, their middle schools and then the high schools. So then I looked at Mr. Wellington's map and realized that there were two things that I couldn't really jive with. And that is the fact that East High School is moved into Midtown, and that's East Anchorage High School. Betty Davis, East Anchorage High School, moved into. Uh, downtown, sorry. And then you have West Anchorage High School moved into downtown. And so it doesn't make sense. And so when I went and looked at the boundary maps of those school zones, it just made sense that we would figure out a way to maintain West Anchorage High School in West Anchorage and East Anchorage High School in East Anchorage. That created a dilemma for population for me because the downtown still needs to grow. But then I tuned into the middle school maps and what I saw that was compelling to me is that the middle school boundary for Clark Middle School pushes east across the north of town. And so if I were to, and I'm really looking at doing this, draft an amendment to Mr. Wellington's plan it would be to only move back that East, excuse me, West Anchorage High School section back into West Anchorage, the East Anchorage High School section back into East Anchorage, and then push the downtown towards the boundary of Central Middle School to the East. And that would incorporate that section, which I think would harmonize using Ms. Kennedy's approach of doing a balance of the deviation, and really splitting the deviation, which is what would get you to the point where you sell your final line, is where the deviation between District 1 or downtown East Anchorage, split the deviation as you go east. The same with downtown and midtown, and the same with downtown and West Anchorage. And so that would increase deviations in each of those categories but it would be done so in a way to harmonize with the communities of interest based around the historic community of the schools. So that's kind of what I heard from the public input that we heard is that, hell no, you're not putting me with them, so we have to go away from that now. Weddleton's map is the most thoughtful and does the least harm and is the most harmonious, and it needs just a little bit of work. That would be my summary. Mr. Welton. Well, I'd like to comment, but first, can you, could you, could you go through your three possible amendments? Like, uh, it probably will be one amendment, but it would be to incorporate the section that East High School is in. If you look at the old boundary, it's where that L is. Where is it? You see Rika Drive? Yeah. It's right there. And so I would Except incorporate that Square section. I would go all the way up. Ashley, could you zoom in and maybe I would pull this section into East Anchorage. Okay. What's your oh, west? What's your western boundary? I didn't catch it with your fingers. Is it for golf? It's literally the old boundary. Okay. Okay. The L. So, and, and then the other one is because I've heard similar concern from Airport Heights 
I would move Airport Heights into Midtown again because it just makes sense, which again, the subject would be going this way for the downtown into the, the boundary of the central middle school, which is right here. And then here, this little section, I would pull back into West Anchorage because of West Anchorage High School. It's just literally Minnesota, that section right there. And Airport Heights, I forgot to mention that. But Airport Heights has raised some concern that they want to stay in Midtown. So I would pull slightly from here. They were I heard different though. I didn't hear, I wasn't at their community council last night. Yeah. I heard different. So um, this section here goes here. And then the downtown, if you look at the central Clark Middle School boundary, I would just follow the Clark Middle School boundary up above DeVar. Mr. Chair. Yes. Mr. Chair, this is Chris, this is Crystal. Thank you. Can you be more specific you, um, on the phone? I, I have no idea how to follow you if you say yeah, this section you know, here. It's almost impossible. Sorry. What's going to happen is I'll just have at some point a drafted version that can show you exactly what I'm proposing. Uh, thank you. At, at 107, Mr. Reds ready to join us. So I don't have it drafted at this point. I'm just chewing on it. I don't have the statistics or how many people are in those zones. We'll figure that out. But the deviation is where the differential will be made. So. Okay, thanks. Mr. Woods. All right, um, well, thanks for that. I think it would be helpful um, with volatile their sets. We talk about District 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? And so not, not to critique your problem on that, but to say West High needs to be West Bank, West High should be might be better in District 3 or something, just because they're called West or East Anchor. It's like, you know, the, the borders of the school district may be relevant, but the name of the school, I don't think, is particularly relevant. Um, and, and it just seems to me, um, but names of schools are awesome. Names of the districts should be one, two, three, four, five, six. So, and we can totally call what we want, but it confuses things to call District 1 downtown, except it's the same board. And it just, you know, Anyway, and you can't call it District 2 2 Gatsby or wherever, it's also on South Side. Only <coughs> now, probably 2 Gatsby Park District. Um, so, anyway, the, uh, a couple of points. Uh, one, you know, on map 11, version 2, you know, I went through and tried to do much of what I think is continuing the discussion here, was keeping neighborhoods together in places accessible, even as close to where we were before. But, you know, if I were looking strictly at what is best for South Anchor, which of these maps, and only in that, I would do this map six version two. It keeps Bayshore and Cloud and I do the map that I don't know. Bayshore and South Park went away. The car that was a long time. Um, it takes Independence Park, which is in Navajo. That's where I live, and I'm okay with that change. It doesn't make sense. You know, it's in Navajo Community Council, and it's Navajo. Um, but I didn't think that that one was as good for the other district. So, Map 11 gives things up. This map 6 is looks like awesome for South Anchorage. District 6, it's almost the same as it was, really. Um, you know, as far as wealth, there are some people really wealthy over Hillside, there's no question. There are people unbelievably wealthy in South Court. In West Anchorage, the rich people I know in West Anchorage. Turnigan, Turnigan, oh my goodness. Those people have some money. We are, I think, being socioeconomically integrated because we have some really rich people all over the time. And to say that, oh, the rich hillsiders have some kind of sway, get to a similar time. Everyone has a voice. Every single person has a voice. Every last one. It's not about how much money you have. Oh, Colony, LA. Everybody has a phone for everyone else. I think what we heard from people in South Anchorage, District 6, Hillside, is because that was the most egregious problem on any of the maps. That's why we're hurt by it clear. It's not because they can afford an email more than someone in another part of the city. Those emails are cheap, so it won't help. So that is such an egregious part of it. It is bad. That's why we're hurt. And if there's other things that's egregious, forget about it. Um, I heard at the Bay Shore Platt Green Council yesterday, they kind of like being in District 6. You know, so Map 11 gives them up. They weren't all happy with the mix in there, but it was, you know, they liked it. So, Anyway, there was give and take, I think, in all of the maps. Thank you. And I just would offer that for me, I use the names because that's how I committed them to my memory. And I do not store one, two, three, four, five, and six in my brain. And so I can't effectively speak about them in 
those numbers. And so I'm uh, sorry, I'll try to continue to call them which section I know them as so I don't scramble them because even just now in my comments I was talking about Clark Middle School, but using the word central is just you know, scramble. So um, thank you for the comments and thank you for the yeah, I had a question for you. Um, where did you say the one district crest? Do you see what the, um, like what's the road? I, for all of these, when you talk about neighborhoods, I am map challenged. I will just admit it from Go. So if you have the cross streets, it's really helpful for me. And for my part, thank you for the question. I don't have the exact eastern boundary established because that too depends upon the population and the deviations, but the I could ask a more precise question. Are you meaning along Rakaw yeah. and then, or sorry, not Rakaw, the bar? The bar. Okay. The the bar. Thank you. And so, and so you were to hit the right natural boundary and the deviation. Right. What you're saying. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. The deviation you. would be whatever the divide is between the two, having the least deviation possible of that section. That's shifting, right? And so that's something that's going to be pretty challenging to work out with the contractor ultimately. Because that's some fuzzy calculus, but uh, that eastward push would go as far as required to get the least deviation possible between the two districts. And then I have one more question. Um, I had originally been contemplating an amendment that would have actually split Airport Heights in half. And I, I talked to a the community council about it. There's a Airport Heights Drive, it's kind of a natural feature, and there's a lot kind of the east side and the other side of Airport Heights. Um, and having portion of it remain in downtown and a portion of it remain in midtown. However, I think what you explained was perhaps a little bit different. So could you explain that one more time so when they ask, I can know what you're It isn't different really. It's exactly what you just suggested. It's if you look in my my assessment, there is a flux that is a natural border in airport heights between the upper heights and the lower heights, right? And so I have in my own pencil marks drawn the line of the bluff between those two sections. And that whole section could divide in half between Midtown and the East Anchorage sections. It just depends on the population numbers. I don't have that in front of me yet. So between Midtown and East Anchorage? Yeah. It wouldn't make sense to draw the downtown into that area. Just very clunky. Sure. And I'll, I'll just um, provide the feedback that I received um, information from the Airport Heights um, Community Council leadership that uh, they don't really identify as being part of these things. Right. And so if the number is justified, we would keep that Airport Heights section as a whole with the part that moves back down into Midtown. And then again, the jog into the East Anchorage section would just be the section that includes the West High. And so that's where, again, we have to, I, have, I don't have the numbers, so I can't say exactly how feasible that is, as well. Thank you. So just the process there, how, how will amendments be done? Because it's a little tricky to balance. You know, you move one little piece on those calls. Not that the pieces can't move, but do we need to make an S4 version, S5? So that's that? the next part of this conversation. When we shift gears from talking about what we've heard and our thoughts about the content, we will then Join together and have a chat about possible ways that we're going to accept amendments going forward. And there are at least three that have been drafted. Mr. Wheeler and I have kind of talked through that we'll present to the committee or the, the body here. It's a work session. And then uh, we'll have a conversation about that. And then as a work session, we'll adopt a methodology for amendments based on what we heard in this work session. Yeah. Not adopt amendments, adopt a methodology for amendments, timelines, and all the things. That are necessary. So that's part two of a three part conversation. Anyone else in the queue? Wait for my motion. I'm asked to make sure John, that you speak into the microphone when you talk. Anyone else on the topic of input? Okay, Ms. Lefrance. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I want to note that while some of these Anchorage residents, especially those in the hillside, have been particularly motivated to weigh in on the facts that were put forward, as Mr. Reynolds had said, we have heard from residents in other parts of the municipality, and especially since um, Monday, just this week, additional comments have come in. And I um, 
would have a request to the committee, and Mr. Chair, perhaps this has been done, but just to share with the other members the cataloging of comments um, by parts of town so that we get a sense of the feedback we're receiving and also to consider any kinds of targeted outreach that might be more effective um, for folks in different parts of town. I, I mean, if, and, and I don't know, just, just to ensure maximum inclusivity, if there are other ways um, we could consider reaching out, if not to um, other councils who haven't weighed in yet, to individuals. So I would just put that second piece out there for perhaps the committee to consider when you all convene after this work session. Thank you. You know, one thing I'm really grateful to all the South Anchorage councils is demonstrated evidence that a motivated community council can affect comments in, in multiple ways. And so that's much to the credit of their boards and their teams. And Halo, there's proof positive that if a council wants to be heard, they will be heard and they were heard. And so to me, that's credit to the process. And what other formats of outreach we achieve, that would be great. Um, Mr. Rivera. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, um, I, I guess, are, are we speaking on amendments right now? Uh, we were just some, I put forward my thoughts on what I wanted to change. Some other people did as well, so yeah, you feel free to put it into the record what you want. Sure. I mean, I, I don't have any specific amendments at this point that I am considering, but um, I, uh, I, I do want to know a little bit more about the process for amendments and specifically timeline um, because, uh, you know, we may come to a point where there's an amendment that gets brought forward, but, um, you know, what happens is if there are amendments to the amendments that folks have, uh, I can't imagine just based off the conversations we've had in committee that that is something that can happen on the fly. Uh, so, it would be great to flesh that out a little bit more. So that's the second question now asking about the amendment process and the amendment process is the second item on our list. And so it seems like this is a natural point in time to shift the conversation to the amendment process. What we've previously discussed in the conversation committee is that it's not really feasible to do amendments to maps on the dais on the day of a meeting in which we're intending to adopt this item. But there's no rule to stop a member from making such an amendment. And so what I'm hoping for is that through this work session, we can generally put a slate of ideas and a method on the table, and then the committee can adopt that method, and that can be the decision made that we stick to as we move forward towards the end process. And that's the amendment process. The second part of that is the timeline. So we're gonna talk about both of those today. So I'm sure it's naturally at some point when we're talking about the amendment process, it will become a timeline issue. So know that that's the next part of the conversation. But I asked Mr. Wheeler to talk through the three scenarios that he had worked out with his team on how amendments could work. So these are just three at this work session. If anyone has bright ideas that could be even better, great, put them on the table. Because when we're done at the committee meeting, we're going to adopt an approach. And so, Mr. Wheeler, give me the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The three options are as follows. First, the assembly member can use one of the existing online publicly available mapping tools to make changes to existing map or create a map that they don't think they want, which would then uh, hopefully result in us getting that from the assembly member along with the shape file so we could run through our process to see how it stacks up. Number two, a little bit less techy, would be to draw on one of the existing PDFs basically where you want to make your changes. Obviously, you can also make notes as to what you're trying to accomplish, but we would ask that two things happen. One, you be very specific as to what you're trying to accomplish. 
So for example, if you said you wanted to move a line north on Twitter, east on C Street, that'd be much better than saying I want to capture a certain neighborhood, which is very, as you've discussed, very problematic with the bay. And we would then take your drawing of the notes and convert that into a online map, keeping in mind that we would have to make certain judgments about your intent, and we would not split census blocks. Number three would be for us to assist a member in creating the map amendments using our tools. But that is that is resource intensive and we couldn't do it um, all the time, right up until deadlines, right, because we have to be able to, to process those changes. So again, it'd be better if you were working with the map that currently exists to make amendments to that versus starting with the scratch. Thank you, Mr. Wheeler. Uh, Mr. Gates. Oh, thank you. I just wanted to add uh, this point is simple in my mind. Um, easiest way to do it in the end is at least the documentation process in portion. So if we're using an existing map, like Mr. Wheeler just mentioned, not starting from scratch, you have the um, which is loading in the and the S and S1 and S2. If it's a good floor, we went to those and increase this map, this new one, or we just have some adjustments. So if it's in the top 11, I suppose the um, floor document documents say the top 11 B3, right? Because you're changing that you hooked, um, it's got the eye on, attached to that, and that seems to be a pretty efficient way for orders and the uh, changes. Thank you. Um, I have first Ms. Kennedy, then Ms. Alan and Mr. Wells. Go ahead, Ms. Kennedy. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, actually, I kind of have two questions there. I couldn't really understand Dean uh, over the phone, so I'd kind of like to hear again what his what his um, comment was uh, just previously, and then my question for. Um, for Dennis is which of those three uh, different ways of doing amendments are is RDI preferring? Thanks. I'll restate what I think Mr. Gates' comment was, is that it's best to start from one of the existing maps as an amendment. So the amendment would be, say, if we pick 11, 11 D3 would be your amendment. And that would be drafted based on that map. Submitted in that way, it would be the most simple or clearer way for an amendment to be structured. That's what I heard Mr. Gates say. Is that a correct assessment? Is that a correct assessment? Well, yes, that's fine. I think it's something we start from scratch, which uh, um, that would be very mysterious for, but uh, it would be said it's correct. And that comes back to a resource allocation issue uh, with the contractor. It's limited resource. So, Mr. Wheeler, in response to your question. Through the chair of Southern members, I think the first option is just to go out and use the available tools and maps that are there. Tweak, tweak that as you desire and have time is probably going to be the best. Um, from a resource perspective, uh, the second best option would be to work with us so we don't have to worry about getting a file that's somehow incomplete or broken or has some problems. And the third, op the third option in terms of our preference would be the hand drawn or dose version. Thank you very, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. That, that's helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the desire for us to use the public available map drawing tools, but I think that's uh, presenting a level of sophistication, perhaps, that some of us may not have. So, um, <laughs> But I do want to talk about versions versus amendments, because I think this is nuanced, but I think it's important. I would prefer to see amendments to a version of a map versus a map in a new version, so that I know, it seems like it's semantics, but if it is map 11 version 2, then I can overlay the amendments on the map versus here is map 11 version 
three, and it might have lots of different changes. Because, and I understand they may all go together because obviously a shift in one place means a shift in another. But I can, I don't know, conceptually I can handle that it's an amendment because you're starting with the base map and then you can explain specifically what changes, because there's the narrative portion as well. So you can explain the changes made and the lie to that particular version of the map because we already had versions one and two of some of these maps. And so I think now switching to a whole new version of the map gets confusing because versions were put forward by the committee and then we could amend them. I don't know. It is probably a very specific request, but it, to me, I think it would help me track it versus um, having new versions of the map to try to track. Um, the other thing I wanted to raise is kind of the timing of the amendments, um, given that our next public hearing is on March 1st um, and getting some time to digest the amendments. Timing is a question we'll come to in the next section, and it's a very important part of this. Okay. And so it's definitely on the table. Um, but first, we got more comments here on this topic. And uh, well, I will say I agree with you on the difference between amendments and versions because we closed new maps on the 20th of January. We had a couple maps that came in after that. And so a new map would be a new map, not in my opinion, the most ideal situation. But any member can bring forward. Mr. Wilson. Uh, thank you. So, I guess I might sense, I mean, I can do whatever we plan, I'll figure it out, but my sense is to do the opposite of what Meg said and do, you know, if you have a change in the map like Wisconsin had, perhaps three you know, changes, and, and that would be an S3 or S4 or whatever, and your AM would say the starting place for this was map, whatever. And the changes made were these, and then we just have one thread there. And how do I compare? What do you do at the RA or just flip it between the two side by side and figure it out? But it just seems a lot cleaner than calling it an amendment. So when we get to the dais, you know, an amendment to the map, or maybe you make an amendment to the map, we'll get them. It just seems clunky. Whereas if we just have here's S3, move S3, and discuss. It's, it's, this is like, way deep in the parliamentary process sausage making, but I think that we're actually saying the same thing. Um, the amendment would be, I think, changes to this map. And so it would, in fact, be another view of the same map with the changes made, which is, it could be called a substitute version of the following amendment. It's, it's, it's deep parliamentary sausage making. Go ahead. I have people in the queue. I'll let you go ahead. Sure. So, so I see what you're saying, but practically speaking, if there are multiple amendments to a particular map, oh, if there are particular amendments to one map version, then if you put a three forward, then those amendments may not apply to that version, to that version of the map. I'm trying to look at the map conversation with them over. Dealing with the tech. Um, so, I'm just thinking for practically, and I understand the amendments to the amendments, but it seems like if we were all amending starting with a singular version of the maps, then we can maybe more easily reconcile the amendments if we need to versus switching the version of the map. So, right. just and another I, thought. I think what we're talking about is like S3, S4, S5, or S1, B2, S1, B3, S1, B4, right? There's, it's just a simple matter of record keeping to keep them associated with the original maps. Mr. Walter, and then get them to keep. Yes, I guess I don't have much to add. I guess it's still rather have S3, S4, S5 to just describe what is different. Unless it's all about saying, might be amendments to the amended map, and you really don't want to get into that. So that kind of speaks more towards having a new S version. And I think for us to bring some of the S version of Thor used to be as bring it, right? I mean, it's not to be introduced or anything. I mean, that, that's easy enough, isn't it? So I think that there are some practical realities, substantial change to the S version may likely require to go back through additional public hearing process. Instead, amendments don't and can get the project done. And again, we have four maps now that are moving forward. 
And I think the request is let's work off the basis of those maps and it's just version control, version one, version two, version three, version four. And I think it achieves the same goal, but we'll see. Okay. Okay. We'll conversation. Yeah, I, I did it. Those maps are clear. Yeah, agreed. That's what it is. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I can see the benefit of what Ms. Alex is saying, um, but I'm also a little worried. I guess it's a question for the committee and for the chair. Uh, while there's ease with being able to layer amendments on a version, that also means it's like adding Amendment 1, Amendment 2, Amendment 3. You suddenly you get confused where you are. And so I don't want that to be happening like at the meeting where we're voting because it feels like that's hard to track and we don't know all the implications and what if we get numbers wrong, et cetera. So can we build out a process and maybe it's more work sessions, but where we all know what amendments we're all interested in and we start looking at them holistically. Like I like the idea, Mr. Constant, of you saying, these are the things I'm thinking, I'm gonna put them all in one version. And I guess I'd love to hear from everyone who's here about are there other amendments people are thinking about? Because maybe, you know, Dennis with you, Mr. Chair, with whoever, and Ashley could take all of that and try to make a couple different versions that might make the process cleaner when we're trying to vote. Yes, that was my thought. And also I guess we're gonna get to this, but how are how are we gonna do this? Are we gonna have a deadline for amendments and then how would we get those out to the public? And then, you know, we're supposed to vote on Tuesday. Feels like that might be getting a little difficult if we're going to have amendments. So, do we have a special meeting a week out? I mean, we do something like that. Um, anyway, starting to think about that process too. Yep. Uh, that's my next question. Uh, Mr. Rivera. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think at this point we're probably repeating ourselves, but I just want to echo a lot of the comments that Ms. Quinn Davidson just made. You know, for me, I, I think it's important that whatever process we take on amendments or additional versions of maps, that it's easy, one, for the public to understand what we're doing, and two, that the process doesn't get mired in parliament, parliamentary procedures that just gets us, that makes ourselves confused. So, um, and so that is my hope that we can get to a place where um, it, it is simple and it doesn't require, uh, you know, I'm just, it's hard for me to imagine that we would be able to manage um, sort of uh, complex things that we might be able to do with other items, amendments to the amendments. Uh, you know, other other uh, maneuvers that we might take. I think making it as simple as possible is going to be key for us to get this done right. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think we all want the idea of doing it as simply as, as possible and not letting ourselves get confused as well as the public. But I think I'm tracking with Ms. Zolotel on this idea of not having these multiple versions that seems like they could, we could just keep bringing them up. And the problem with that is you might have one or two people that really know anything about a particular version, um, but it doesn't really belong to the body until it's presented. Whereas with amendments, we typically get the opportunity for all of us to hear it at once, and it either gets voted up or down. And I certainly understand that there's some data research type things that have to go uh, on with those particular amendments, and then that becomes time consuming. So I think to a certain extent, we have to resign ourselves to the fact that this does take time. It takes time for RDI to respond. It takes time for all of us to kind of digest some of this. It might take time for the public to weigh in. But it seems to me that if we start coming off with a, out with a list of S5, S, S6, S7, whatever number, each one of those are even more subjected to an opportunity for public uh, input. And so I think if anything, that starts to muddy the waters and make things more confusing as well. So it seems to me that because we're getting to the point where we've narrowed it down to four maps and really right now there seems like there's two that we're really talking about 
um, consistently, we ought to be at a point where we can just do some of that fine tuning and those little tweaks. And to me, that is more of a function of amendment by which the entire body is looking at at the same time and trying to come to a decision on. So um, I don't know if that's exactly where Ms. Zolotel was going, but again, I think that idea of tracking is going to be easier with amendments than it is uh, with having multiple members come up with new versions. So that's just my thought. Um, yeah, we we'll have to figure out how we make a decision on this in order to, to really move forward with a good process. But thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And along this, thank you, Mr. Chair. Along a similar line, you know, if, if we decide to move forward with four maps and members introduce amendments to each of those maps, I think we're going to get mired deep in the mud. We're going to be in the weeds for, you know, too long. And so I, I think it might be better for us just to decide on a map and then we can you know, do amendments to just that one map. And so I think that would sort of put us all on the same page, so to speak. Just, just my thought. That is definitely now a question on the table for the committee. We can discuss that part of the work session if that is the way we want to go. At the beginning of the uh, Mr. Gates. Thank you. Um, I just asked to speak because uh, it's in South Hill. I think the approach you described is workable for South um, Island. Um, whatever method for changing boundaries, moving maps, works for Bond, um, can work with that. And I just wanted to mention um, that, of course, the budget for the finality of the final map on the timeline that we have adopted. Um, but sometimes uh, on the floor or on the spot, the meeting, the boundary change to be preserved one way or the other. It uh, is not always clear, as I was pressured by Mr. Peters to say, did you get higher than the mind? And that uh, just made me think of the old experience in 2012, where we did have a floor amendment uh, to change the survey neighborhood in District 4. I think it was, and also we complied with that S20 ban. Always at the time, so that's sweet for safe families. But uh, changing that boundary on the floor, you know, by the turning to the meeting, had some people realizing, well, that changes our population numbers a bit and increased the deviation more than we want. So uh, we saw, I'm sure that we had our ordinance 2012 108 that's amended, and then the ordinance 2012 117, and that was like the next meeting. So, even if you know we have a floor amendment that changes around the you know, for good reasons, of course, so neighbors and so forth, and maybe at the end our uh, study members uh, realize, well, I think that now uh, that I see the population numbers and data and the effects that change the dominoes that fall, uh, what you do a little bit more to make it more, I guess. Uh, I do with the goal of uh, the Constitution and Charter, maybe we can soon do that. Um, maybe not the most desirable timeline, but it's possible in the 2012 experience. Yep, there are trying to learn from that, and I think that there's general agreement that as much as possible when we get to part three of this conversation, we will set out a timeline that will hopefully help us avoid that. But if not, of course, as has been said numerous times, never can propose an amendment at any time. And so uh, that's the reality of our effort. That's a good thing. Next in the queue is, I believe, Mr. Rivera. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. No, I, I don't think I got back in the queue. Okay, it's confusing text. Uh, Ms. LaFrance. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and first off, thanks to the committee members for getting the process this far along. And I definitely support any efforts um, by the committee to streamline this process further before we get to the floor for debate. And I appreciate uh, the points I've been raised. And Ms. Davidson, you had mentioned a holistic view. And um, I am concerned about ripple effects or uh, dominoes, as Mr. Gates said. I don't have the amendments proposed now, but that could change depending on what amendments you all propose and um, what might pass. 
and also actually um, what further feedback we get from members of the public. And as I come to a better understanding of you know, what is important for each district as well, um, I am really curious to see, like, for example, what MAP 11 version 2 or MAP 6 would look like if all the amendments that were mentioned here today were applied to that map and if they are compatible with each other. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And so uh, with 45 minutes left, I think everyone else in the queue, it's time to go to the most significant question of the day, I think, which is timeline. And, well, actually, before we do that, is there a general consensus around everybody here? It's not a vote, just a question about consensus that we do consider narrowing down yet again the maps for consideration at the committee today. Is that a charge that the committee should take on? I'm not objecting to that idea. No objection. Mr. Wilson has a finger up. So I don't, I don't know that you've objected. I think you've made a really good point there. If anyone with the numbers should really be prepared to amend every month before, and that would get pretty unwieldy. Um, but when it sounds like the members are talking here, relatively small. But we know if we move one little piece, things start toppling over. So it, it's like if we're all committed not to do huge major changes, then yes. Yeah, so but I think I can't really ask that of someone. So actually, we can ask people to perform in a certain way, and then if they don't, then we have the power of the majority to say, well, we have an agreement. You didn't follow through, so we say no. But anyone can at any time bring it up, and if their argument is compelling, then it wins, which is our process. And so we could actually do that, set up kind of parameters and restrictions, and say these are the things we as a committee agree to. But the question really is: Are are you wanting the committee today to further narrow the map slate of what we're going to spend our time with the contractor evaluating? And so. Um, setting up amendments and drafting changes. And I mean, I've heard consistently from the public that really want that, and it's the map 11 that has just resoundingly cleared the bar for input and support. I think the only one we heard, not heard, but we heard, oh, well, that's not true. We've heard support for all of them. Uh, more, of course, for 11, but okay. Yeah, I think if I were the general public, it feels like we haven't had a chance to look at it. haven't had a chance to look at it closely. And then we further narrow it down. Are we helping the general public? Do I want to look at the changes from that? I don't know. Yeah, so that's okay. for the committee to decide. But at this point, I heard no objection. I heard one person saying, I have to think about it some more. And so that is a third topic for later. And then, please, Ms. Brent. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Since I'm not on the committee, I'm compelled by the point that Mr. Reynoldson raised, and that since you know, there is further public hearing coming, it, would, it might be helpful to keep four maps in play until that time. And so Thank then you. that might argue for another committee meeting after the next public hearing to take action on narrowing if the committee doesn't decide to do that today. Mr. Peterson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, you know, actually, if we keep four maps in play and we continue to get comments from the public on all four maps, that has a tendency to, to uh, drag us, to dr drag the process, I think. And I, um, that's why I, I believe we're, we're better off moving forward with, with, uh, with one map and then people can make comments on that particular one map. And I think that helps get us to, to a decision faster than moving forward, fast forward. Thanks. Ms. Allen. Thank you. Uh, not being a member of the committee um, and appreciating my Midtown counterparts who doing the hard work for Midtown, um, what I would like to see happen is that after the next public hearing, um, or even probably after the next public hearing, a recommendation or the committee making the choice if it's going to move forward with a limited number of maps and the, and the why, why that is the choice. I think that has been part of 
um, not being a committee member, the hard part of explaining why certain maps did or didn't make it out. Ideally, I would love to see a resolution brought before the body saying we're going to proceed with this map and do amendments to this map, but the timing may not work. Um, you know, put forward by the committee, maybe any your committee where you actually have the majority, but having that rationale and letting it be adopted or let anyone register their objection so that when we are talking about amendments to the map, if it's one, we know clearly how we got there um, if we've narrowed it down prior to um, the vote. So that actually raises a third way. I'm just assuming again on the timeline issue, we want to extend to make one more meeting to another day, which is part of this conversation right now. It could very well be that, and I don't know being what the parliamentary methodology is for this, that not the committee meets again, but in fact, the assembly after the public hearing is closed, takes some interim action to state the map that we generally agree is going to proceed to the final debate will be this one, right? And so then everyone would have an opportunity. And in some ways that would be like, I don't know exactly the method could be to move to the move to amend by removing version one, two, and four, you know, map six, map seven and uh, 12 at the assembly and then continuing to item to whatever special meeting. That way it's not even the committee. We don't have to have another meeting. We can just use the opportunity of proceeding through the public hearing, having all the items on the table, and at that moment, narrowing them down with the decision made today that will host a third public hearing or at least at the next meeting to take up the question on the item itself. So Dean, is, is that a procedure you think we could navigate? Um, I'm not sure how it's going I guess so. So the way we you have to reframe it. If I'm I can, if I make a motion to postpone indefinitely. S, the, the S and the S2 version and then continue to debate on, you know, the S1 version, would that be a parliamentary move that would be allowed? Um, in, in some ways, what you describe is sort of contrary to how we traditionally have approached uh, in ordinance and as an agenda item, because we should really be out of in the past, uh, the original AO and AOS version, and S1 version, and one is moved for a motion is postponed indefinitely, and typically applied to all of them. But I think if you could phrase your motion the way you're suggesting, I see. so that you're just postponing the S version, yeah. no, it wouldn't be that. that you answered the question. You answered the question. The actual motion would be I move map X, and then at the Whatever the map is, it gets moved, and then everything else is to the side, and then amendments would come to that map. Is that, am I communicating there? So there, we would actually get through the public hearing, close the public hearing, and make a motion to approve the 2020, whatever it is, version 30 or S, S, whatever. Then the rest of them do naturally fall aside, right? They could come back and be resurrected if the majority wanted to. Is that that means short process. Oh, yeah, as I understand our usual process, um, the way the body approved closes is there's a motion to move a specific way version, this S1 version. Um, then you just start talking about the S1 version with its content and its attached map, which I think is 1102. And the rest of them will just follow when is that motion to approve it. So that answers the question. Can in fact at that point use the body to narrow the question and not the committee, which is I think a more appropriate way. Um, so that's now an element that we can consider at the committee today. And again, not picking today which map, we can still wait to hear from the members of the public. So then that raises the question of there's two questions left, I think. The first question can't be answered until the second question. The first question is when are amendments due? for us to be able to get them into the system, get them into format and meeting standards and then get them circulated so that the public and the members can see them. 
but I don't think we can answer that question until we answer the next question, which is there was desire to have a third public hearing, or at least to continue for some more opportunity for community councils to hear. I and another member are not going to be in attendance in person on the 15th. There's is there not a day I want this item to move forward because I personally want to be in the room when this item passes because I've spent a lot of time and years working together us to this point. And we'll be on the discussion. And yeah, we'll be at a totally different time. Now. And I'll be on the phone. I'll listen until four in the morning, but I don't want to miss this debate. So the question is if we're going to have a third day, there are two days in keeping with the timeline. Uh, that we have contemplated, and that is the 8th, which is a Tuesday, or the 22nd, which is a Tuesday. I'm looking up the school district spring break. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's the weekend. The 8th. The 8th, is that early? Well, the 4th is Friday. That's the 7th. I think it's right. Oh, that's coming up. I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is. It's a week. trying to figure out when the ASD spring break is. It is one of the Okay, so that might help us narrow the decision. It provides more time. It, you know, it isn't the 15th because that James Day just does not work uh, for me. And I have my interest in this. It's very high. So the 22nd then looks to be the day. Uh, so I have Mr. Rivera and Ms. Mendoza in this out. So feelings about uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I think your phone is, is uh, freezing out because I am not in the queue. Thanks. <laughs> so weird. Uh, speak anyway. Chris, <laughs> uh, Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, so I'm on a plane on at night. I landed at 11 to 7 p.m. on the 22nd. So I can try to change that, I guess. Um, I guess I'm wondering, like, working backwards. So say we had amendments due. Yeah. How do we do this? I'm sorry, I don't have more. I thought I had more ideas now. And I think I guess let's pick a day to we'll have the final action. And then I think it's pretty straightforward to build a counter backwards from there. And uh, I think if it is three weeks out and then it's a week before or two weeks before is great. And then mm -hmm. we'll really have a chance to circulate the audience. Okay, I guess I would ask if it's all the same to people as so we could do it on the 23rd or 24th, but if so, that's not possible, it's not possible. Um, I, I don't have a problem with either of those days, but the quarter day would not have a problem with the quarter day. Okay. So, Ms. Kennedy, no, Ms. Sell, it's all first, and then Ms. Kennedy. Yeah, thank you. Um, I would like to see um, us do our public hearing on the first as scheduled. Um, have amendments in the, uh, and then perhaps then we are down to a singular map, have amendments in the week of March 7th, and then um, we could potentially set, if there's a desire for a third public hearing, um, have that public hearing perhaps um, on the 15th, or just the amendments, but not take action, and then move into, because then members who are either listening or need to catch up can, and then we can move into a special meeting for the vote. The, the moving of the amendments in the vote. The week of the 21st, but maybe not on the 22nd. That, that would give us time to have the public also consider the amendments um, and have an opportunity to speak on them. So to restate, the amendments in general would be due the week the seventh. The circulated public hearing would continue or reopen or have a new public hearing on the meeting of the fifteenth. We'll take firm commitment. We're not voting on that thing until we're back, and then the next week um, we take action. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so I have um, Ms. Kennedy and then Mr. Peterson. Thank you. No, I'm going to say Mr. Rivera. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. I know it's hard to keep up with everybody trying to text you um, to get in the queue. Um, 
I'm, I'm a little behind, I think, in making this comment, but I wanted to say that I really don't think it's appropriate at this point for the committee uh, to look at trying to whittle any of the potential uh, maps that are basically part of next Tuesday's um, conversation and testimony uh, to whittle down to anything less than we've already told the public that is available for them to comment on. With that, uh, I wanted to mention that uh, the um, S2 map is not on the reapportionment website except under the bar that says archived. So we probably should move that up so that it is actually one of the, ma the maps that is on the agenda so that people can find it a little bit easier. It just gets confusing when you look down and try to find map 12 and it's got in parentheses by an archive and then it's not at the top of the list with the other three. So anyway, you might need to, to do that so that when we send people to that website, which I do on a regular basis, it, it, you know, that that's not so confusing to them. Um, third, the, third and, and sorry, I've got airplanes overhead. Um, but the third thing that I wanted to say is that I absolutely appreciate the conversation about moving to either the 20, 20th or 21st, and I don't I really couldn't, didn't understand exactly why there was a, a difference between which one of those dates we wanted to choose, but that actually would, um, would answer the question that a lot of my community councils have in regard to will they have enough time to get any kind of comment. So if we can move to that uh, public hearing on that date, that would really be uh, helpful for my community. So I would support that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And just a quick answer to the question about the map. The committee made a decision last time that uh, that map wasn't moving forward. So the committee can take that question up again today. Uh, I couldn't just make that decision after the committee did. So oh, she's done that. No, no, it's 12. Oh, so, but that is a question for today's meeting. Yeah, yes. And so it's no problem. That would be resolved. And so, and then, uh, okay, so I don't know that the idea was moving the public hearing to the 20th or the 23rd. 22nd, but it was to have a public hearing on the 15th, close the public hearing and have amendments and debate on the next meeting. So uh, that said, I have Mr. Rivera. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, I am really in the queue this time. So um, I have uh, a couple comments on this, I guess. So first is um, could Ms. Zolotel just re date her timeline just to make sure I got it correctly. Sure. Um, the idea was that we move forward with the public hearing on March 1st as currently scheduled um, with the possibility that action can be taken to narrow down to a map for Mr. Costin's suggestion um, and continue to um, have amendments come in the week of March 7th with a public hearing set on March 15th on the amendments and the uh, map that's moving forward, closing the public hearing, and then setting a special meeting on the 21st for action. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Chair, walking me through that. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I think I like that timeline. Um, I think as committee members, some committee members have said uh, in previous meetings, we have um, told the community and the public um, that March 1st is going to be a public hearing. So service to our uh, constituents to not have March 1st as a public hearing. And then, you know, from my perspective, I, I do think that we do the best service to our community if we get them what we are clearly thinking as soon as possible. So being totally transparent that this is the map that we are going towards. Because, you know, what I have heard is assumptions that there might be support for one of the other maps when, you know, in my mind, you know, there are some maps that I just don't fathom getting six votes at all, but having them on the table creates this assumption that there might actually be support for this map. So for me, let's let's be transparent. And that means 
taking action to narrow the maps down so that our constituents know exactly what direction we're going to go. And for me, the sooner we do that, the sooner our constituents can actually provide some real honest feedback on a map. So uh, I, I like the direction as Ms. Zolotel has outlined. Thanks. Thank you. I would push back on the idea that the feedback you have received has not been real and honest or germane. It's been broad and deep at the same time and very thoughtful. But to your point, narrowing it down helps people to have a very specific element to make further comments on. So other members, thank you. Mr. Peters. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And so we're to the point where we uh, probably have already to choose a, what date to have a special meeting on. And it sounds like there's several people traveling. Uh, so it's on the 22nd. So and I was just thinking if, if we had a special meeting on the 24th or 25th, that would give a full month for uh, the public and community councils to give us additional feedback. And so just just an idea. 25th is my birthday. It's also yeah, that's right. No, Thursday, <laughs> if Thursday is feasible, it could be the 21st, it could be the 23rd, or it could be the 24th. Okay. Right, you're back. I'm back on the 22nd at 11 at night. So any of those 23rd, 24th. Yes. <laughs> From eleven to four. We could have really ambitious. <laughs> and I could. I mean, I can look into changing it. No, no, it's, it's okay. Just, if it's okay for everyone else. I, I think it's fine. The question is, is it Wednesday the twenty third or Thursday the twenty fourth? And we're not voting. The committee will decide. But we're trying to get the best sense of the body right now. And Madam uh, Clerk, I don't know if you can look at the calendar of the chamber and see if there's any conflicts on those two nights. I don't. Can you maybe text Barbara and someone that can figure that out for us? Because that's a pretty important piece of information. We don't need it for 20 minutes, but. So, okay, the committee, how about Ms. Ellis? Thank you. Um, in the interest of intel, I do want to make a comment that that last, uh, I think it'll be on the 24th, although Mr. Rivera will correct me, or it'll be on the 31st, because there are five Thursdays in March. Um, at the Luke Community Council often gets short shrift when we have special meetings, and we seem to always be right over their community council. So I'll clarify that date. Um, that would argue against the 24th and moving it to the 23rd. I do have a community council that I would be special meetings on Thursdays after the wide. I think I got the last 10 minutes on last night. But, uh, so um, it looks like the 23rd to the review available is a date that has the least Objection to okay. So I think that if the, okay, Mr. Wheeler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just maybe a, a, a there's a potential motion on the floor to a friendly amendment. So in order for us to process amendments and have them available to the public on the 15th, because that's what we're talking about, then I believe Ashley uh, would suggest that we should have any amendments by Wednesday the 9th. So that we have time to process. I don't know how many there are going to be, it's just a few. It's not that much more difficult, but uh, we need to have getting a late on Friday may not make it workable. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Cordell. Thank you. There's a question. Um, I was just going to say that I don't know if having, um, it's a question for the body, but do we want the maps amendments produced on the 15th, or do we want to try to get them produced on the 11th? So that the public has a couple of days to look at it and then provide testimony. Right. Or maybe it's even the 14th, but I just feel like it shouldn't be on the day of the testimony. So my hope is that amendments will be in and done by the 7th to the contractor. And that within as quickly as they can turn around from the 7th, get everything formalized, working with legal to get them in the proper format of amendment. And so whatever timeline that takes, which I can imagine depends on either if there's one, they can do it probably in a day, there's two or two days kind of thing, depending on how complex the changes are. And so with that in mind, I think that the goal really is we can pick the seventh, which is a Monday, one week after we make the decision to narrow, that's a lot of time, get to work right away, that was the essence, so to speak. 
that we have from the 10th to the 15th to have those outs in the public. It would be my hope. Um, I know that's kind of going to put a lot of pressure on the contractor, but uh, this is the, the cringe period. Three or four days, and then the room that has plus some plus, so maybe you find yourself half a dozen. Reasonable? Actually? Yes, it's just someone. Perfect. So that, then again, the committee will firm this timeline up of when we get through, but that is drafted up there by the clerk and it's on the board. That will be but for us when the committee convenes in 20 minutes. Other inputs? Anything? Well, I was just going to say if it's helpful, and I don't know if at this point, it's helpful for the committee to engage a lot, or if we need to just kind of transition out of the committee and into the whole body. But we could do something on the 11, if that would help the conversation about the amendments we have. If there's you know space to workshop that, so that when we get there, I, I don't I don't know if that's even helpful. But I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, I would ask for a work session on the 18th, 17th or 18th, where the amendments will have already gotten the public feedback. And then we would have that intervening work session, like is our typical route um, prior to the next week where we're expected to take action. That's good. We're not taking any votes, so no worries. Um, so, any other items that the members need to contemplate or put on the board and discuss right now? Please, Mr. Friend. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and again, thanks to the committee members for your work thus far, and especially to Mr. Wellington. Or putting forward Map 11. And um, however, the committee lands on the decision as to whether or not to reduce the number of maps before March 1st, I appreciated Mr. Rivera's comment about um, you know, being open about which maps are likely to advance. I said earlier, I clearly don't support Map 7, and you know, my top two maps. The map 11 version 2 and map 6 version 2, and so I'll just mention that for consideration um, to the committee for your discussion later today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I think there might have been general consensus that we don't do any better with the map for the second work session. Our public hearing is already published, it's already all set up, and so I think that that's the way it's probably going to go, but we'll let the committee have that decision. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that, <laughs> but we'll definitely tackle that when we get there. Other input? That's I guess the only other thing that might be useful while we're all here together is, are there other amendments besides what Mr. Constant mentioned or what I mentioned? Or the amendment all we've heard so far um, that members are looking at because I think it might help. Like, I like the idea that Mr. Constant sort of listening to that and planning to put an amendment together that does all of that. I think where it's going to get messy is if we all have separate amendments. So, if other amend uh, members know that they're interested in an amendment, would you feel comfortable mentioning it? Because perhaps Mr. Constant or, or whoever else could incorporate that into their new version that we could all look at. And I would add to that. I thought about ways we could narrow the amendment process meaningfully. And one thought was, like, let's come to some gentle person's agreement of one amendment proposal per district, meaning you work with your your co person to do it, or some other way to narrow. That would mean only six, which is still a lot, and probably we won't get that many. But maybe we will. I don't know. So it's. I think it's great if folks have ideas they want to place on the table. We still have 15 minutes, but if not, um, something I'm trying to think about ways to engage and narrow the bandwidth to keep the resource available to us. Within what? Yeah, I'm sorry. 
It's, I actually built in enough flex time within the process that if we land on the 23rd, we're still in my opinion. I built in a margin of a few weeks. But that's just me. So is there any other input or should we take a break for 15 minutes and come back to the committee meeting and have all of that follow up? Okay, I'm hearing no comments, so at this point we'll adjourn the first session. I'm bring it I should, I should.